G'day, Rick here again, and today I'm going to walk you through my latest workflow for bringing articles from Zotero into Obsidian. Now I'll have more in-depth content on this soon, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of how I'm handling this now. As many of you will know, I've been refining this integration between Zotero and Obsidian for quite some time now, and this workflow is constantly evolving to suit my personal needs, but I'm sure that it helps many of you as well. So that's really good. So on the screen, you can see an article that I've already imported. And if you're familiar with my existing template, you might notice some of the new fields that are in YAML at the, at the top here, and particularly the ones around the bottom that I have added. Hey, let's have a look at some of these new YAML fields. Now, some of the key updates that I would like to talk to you about, one of the important new ones is this one here, which is the journal rank. If you're doing a literature review, as you will probably know, it's most important to cite from the highest ranking journals. Adding the journal rank into the YAML is giving us an opportunity to signify what that is in our recording of the papers that we've read. I find that to be a valuable addition. Created and modified dates, I need to raise these with you. The created and modified dates no longer seem to work since the Tero 7 has been introduced. They used to populate automatically when you imported the article. Now they will be just a blank field and you'll need to actually go on to the the date there and actually insert the date that it's created and the date that it's modified. So now let's talk about these bottom ones because they're the most important. I've added theme, scope, the type, methodology, what limitations there are, the gaps in the paper, uh, how it's related to my research or whatever the research question is that you happen to be doing, how I rank it in terms of its importance and value to my research, and of course, whether or not it's peer reviewed. So they are the additions to the YAML tags, uh, and you will see why shortly as we go on, the importance of having those in the imported article. Let's have a little bit of a talk about annotating PDFs. Well, that's what it's all about with this Obsidian and Zotero, isn't it? Now, if you annotate PDFs in Zotero itself, you can't see them elsewhere. You can't see them in a PDF viewer or you can't see them in a, PDF, a native PDF application. The reason for that is that if you annotate the PDFs in Zotero itself, it stores those annotations within its own database. So if you open that PDF elsewhere, you're not going to see any of the notes that you've made. And uh, oh, by the way, here's a little new Obsidian plugin that I've been playing with. I reckon it's a ripper because it hides the uh, the sidebar and gives you a bit more real estate. There's another video about that, uh, the last one that I did actually. So have a look at that. It's really handy for making sure you've got plenty of real estate on your screen. Now in my setup for Zotero, my PDFs are stored in my Google Drive. They're not stored locally in Obsidian. And simply that's because I can get access to them from a computer anywhere by going to my Google Drive. So if I go to my file explorer here, and this is the Prado one, and I'll open it here, and you can see that uh, I'm using PDF Element to work on these. And you can see that some of the PDF is already annotated, etc. So there you go. And these are down the side here are the comments that have been made on the PDF as I've as I've gone through. So what we're going to have a look at next is annotating the PDFs and getting them into Zotero, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, what we're going to talk about now is highlighting and bringing our notes into Zotero and making it all happen. So to get prepared for this, the first thing that we're going to do is open our PDF in a normal PDF application. So let's open the note firstly, and I'll just pull this up to here. I've got my screen very small at the moment. Uh, and I want to open in the default app. And now this paper is opened up in PDF Element. 
The other thing that I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go back to my sidebar and I'm going to find the paper again, which is there, and I'm going to right click on it and say open to the right. So we've got the paper on this side and we have the PDF on this side. And you can see that, that they're both a match. In fact, I might pull this in a bit so that we can see a bit better. You can see that they're both matching. They're exactly the same article, pulled it in and opened in two, two applications, one in Obsidian and the other in PDF Element. Now, what we're going to do here is that in Obsidian, I use PDF++ for the purpose of annotating my PDFs. And I've got my color codes up here, and that's what it's open in. It's open in that particular plugin. But what I've found with a number of PDFs is that it, they don't necessarily work within Obsidian because it hasn't got a native PDF viewer, which uh, they're working on, I know, and it'll be nice when they get it. So what I do is that I do the annotations in the PDF element program and then import them across. So what I do is to go into PDF element here, and it doesn't matter where we go, put this research right, etc., etc. We'll just highlight it down to there, and then we're going to click the colored highlighter, and you can change them for all sorts of colors. I have uh, blue if I need to reference another paper, I use yellow for just an ordinary note, red for something that's important or critical, and uh, green for definitions, but there's a couple of others too. But anyway, that one's there. Now, uh, let's have a look at here in Obsidian. So I'm trying to match them up a little bit. And the research grid aims to understand. So this is the section here. But first of all, before we do that, we'll um, add a comment to this one and say that uh, this is simply a comment on annotation, blah, 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 right, and that's it, and we've got that there. So, if we go up here to the file, there are two ways of doing this, but you can hit Control S, but we're just going to hit Save, and watch what happens here in Obsidian. Save there, and it's transferred that notice, it's saved it here into Obsidian, and it's also got the uh, the annotation in there as well this is i don't know if you can see that this is simply a comment on the annotation so now what we're going to do is that we are going to highlight this annotation here with our cursor we're going to right click on it and there is a pop-up here which you're customized in pdf plus plus for what it, what they will do and this one is to quote it in a call out and depending on your theme your call outs can look Quite nice. I've used a light theme in this for the purpose of the video. Normally I use a dark theme and they look quite good, I think. But anyway, so here we copy, right click, quote in call out, and control V, and there is our comment. Just put another one in there. No, let's put it V. Right, there we are. So it's then put it in here. And that's the highlight that we got this research aim to understand. You can see that's the same thing. And then at the bottom, there's got the comment. This is simply a comment on the annotation. And if we want to see where that is in the note, we just highlight our uh, link here. And that pulls up the annotation again. And we can go in there if we want to. But this is really useful when you haven't got the PDF on the right-hand side that you can go through your notes and you can actually say, oh, what did that relate to? And have a look before and after it to get better context if you need to. So that's now done. And my highlights are now fully integrated into my research workflow. So what we'll do now is we'll just close down the PDF and we're back to the article itself within Obsidian. So let's have a look what's next and how we manage all our Obsidian notes for a literature review so we can keep track of them all. By the way, I just re remembered thinking of this, I also use tags within my comments uh, so that I can pull those in a little bit later as well as you will see. So we'll see you in the next section. Well, as you can no doubt see, I've switched my settings back to dark mode. The light mode was giving me the irrits. I shall be polite. 
Uh, one of the things that you will be able to do is to see now what my call-outs actually look like and the different colours that they are in and how they're presented when they do come across. So it makes it much easier to read them. And, of course, the same thing goes that you highlight there and it pulls up the, the PDF that you can have a look at where the notes come from. Now, with the dark mode too, because I've switched to it, you've had a look at the light mode. Let me know in the comments which mode you prefer. Let's talk about now what we're going to do with all of these papers that we've collected uh, and how we're going to keep track of them all. So I was using DB Folder, uh, but it didn't quite meet my needs. So I switched to Obsidian's Projects plugin, and honestly, it is absolutely brilliant. So all of this YAML that we talked about earlier comes into the Project Folder because I'm calling it in by the YAML fields. So let's have a look at the Projects Folder. So this is it here, and one of the reasons I switched back to dark mode was because you seriously, you just couldn't see this properly. So what it's doing here is that all of these ones are YAML tags. And you can hide the fields there. It's got the names of the ones that you can, and down the bottom it's got the ones that are already hidden so that they're not showing in here because I don't need them, like DOI, for example, and uh, the created date. So that's, that's fine, I don't need those. So what I have got though is that I've got my links here to the papers so that if I click on one of those, it takes it direct to the article. It's a shame that I can't seem to work out how I can right click on it and get it to open to the right or open in a separate tab or something of that nature. It opens, opens directly to the article. So what I've got is the name of the article uh, and that is fixed, so even if I go across here like that, the article's name always stays in place, and that's just a setting in projects. I've got the year that it was published, the author, item type, journal. Here I've got the how it's related, what gaps that I've identified in the keywords, what limitations are there in the methodology. This rank here is for how I've ranked it in terms of its relationship to my research, uh, the scope, the theme, so that's my projects, and that is really just fantastic, I'm finding. One of the other things that I've got, the ones coloured yellow, is alerting me which ones are from a Q1 journal. So the best date updates are also in the projects folder are bi-directional. So if you change your field here, and now let's have a look at Prado. Prado is down here, and... Let's go across this way. Prado, uh, we've got CLP is how related. So let's just add their demo, add list on demo, and add it. So that's now there in the projects. If we go across the pro, Prado, you'll see that it has also got demo listed in how related. So if I change something here, uh, if I put it in their demo, uh, demo 2, enter, and go back to projects, you'll see that it's got demo 2 there. So completely interactive between both your projects and your articles. Fantastic operation, uh, easy way to keep a track of all your literature that you're doing, and certainly in my view beats the hell out of an Excel spreadsheet because you can actually do searches on it and everything. So... Final thoughts. The workflow that I'm working on, it's constantly evolving and I have more improvements coming up soon. Now, if you're interested, there's a wait list on my website for upcoming course where I'll go even deeper into this process. I'm also working on an extensive literature review and this workflow is making it so much easier to track my reading progress. Look, it's seriously, it's just not funny. It's just made it so much better. So if you make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you found this useful, drop any questions in the comments so I can cover them in future videos. And don't forget, let me know whether you prefer the light or the dark screen. That would be very helpful. And so until the next time, cheers.